Hey Nergis. Hi. Nergis or Nergis, we've been having this debate. Yeah, it's uh, whatever, whatever you You're want to cool. call me. Just call me. That's it. <laughs> so she did it. She did it for the camera. Yeah, I did it for you. Yeah. It's, I guess it's Nergis. Arabic wise, it's Nergis. Nergis. And I think it's an Arabic name. Yeah, my friends who are Arabic call me Nargis. Yeah. And I don't mind. Okay. I'm just happy they call me. <laughs> Let's start just with... Happy I have friends. <laughs> You're giving me things to think about. I know, I'll give you a lot of things to think about. <laughs> um, let's start with how are you really doing? With an underline under really. Oh my God, is that how you make people cry? No. Oh, okay. Mm. <laughs> I think a lot of people like, you know, when you ask how are you, they always like make up something. Yes. Because there's so many things that go on in everyone's lives. So how am I really doing right now? Okay, let's see. So... How should I phrase it? I think I'm in a moment in my life of transitioning into another life. Does that make sense? A new like chapter? New, yeah, like a new chapter. Like, like I, I'm like changing inside. The way I see things and feel about things are very different. And how what's old, important to how me. How old are you now? I can't tell you that. Really? I'm forever 21. <laughs> Hey. Celebrate your age. You know, I, I, there's a nice 21. thing I heard. <laughs> Somebody recently said, don't say how old are you, say I'm level this. I'm level so I'm level 38. You're level 38? Yeah. Uh, well, I think it's a pretty different way of looking at it. True, but mm. if you believe in manifesting and how our mind and body connect on a cellular level and what we think we become, mm. I always want to be positive and think that I am in the most youthful age so I can feel vibrant and healthy and alive and full of passion. But I think the number is... Well, the number doesn't mean anything, but it's a state it of mind. It can. It can. I've, I've met a lot of old people, but they're still dumb and unwise. And I've met the opposite. People well, who are well-traveled. I like asking not how educated somebody is, but how well-traveled they are. Well, that I would feel like it's like maturity. So. But I feel like there's like this feeling, of, I can't explain it. I don't want to say how old I am also, because in the business that I'm in, they pigeonhole you, even though you can just Google me. But yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go change that now. <laughs> yeah. Somebody get on Wiki and uh, change that to 21. Mm. But I think that from my own experience, I would have to say that as we get older, you know, things happen in your body. Gray hairs start happening. I don't have gray hair. I'm going to keep it, it. Yeah. Well, for a guy, maybe it's, yeah. it's different. Although a lot no, of guys like to color it. No. They do? Yeah, I think it looks sexy big, on yeah. a guy. It's big in it. the Gulf. Really? I think yeah. women, unfortunately, we have a lot of pressure, so you we do. have to do all these things to look youthful. Mm. Um, so what I was saying is that sometimes your body, you know, your body changes. You break down, you know, injuries happen, yeah. health issues happen at a certain age, especially if you didn't take care of yourself that well. It starts showing at a certain age. Mm. So I want to manifest 21. My body's healthy. And but young. 21 is not a great age. I don't like it. I mean, it was cool. I think maybe like 28. It? Yeah, okay, is... I'll take that. Let's be 28. <laughs> you're, so you're not going to say you're... We have to go on Wikipedia and actually put it on the... No, don't do no, that. No, I'm not going to do it. That's so mean. No. I mean, I, whatever. I, I tell everybody, but I'm on camera, so I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> it's up to you. I think you should be so proud and grateful for the age that we have. True. Like, I love the 30s. True. I'm 38 now and I think it's, the, it's a phase, let's say it's a phase or chapter, mm. where I finally know what I like and what I don't like. What shit I tolerate, what I don't. What kind of work I like, what kind of friends I like, what kind of food I like. Mm. And it's fine-tuning. Right. Khalas, I know. I've tried, I've explored, I've traveled, right. I've met. That is true. And know? I think when I mentioned the transition or the, the things that I'm going through, it's, it's actually that. It's actually now... Like, um, knowing what I like, standing up for myself, taking a stand, um, not letting other people tell me what to do. Because in this business, I'm not sure if you know, but you always have a lot of people working, you know, with you. And so there's always like all this chatter going on. Oh, you need to do this. Oh, you need to look like this. Oh, look what she's doing. You should do that too. And then you get caught up in this like space of, oh my God, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to look like that. I got to be like this. I got to behave like this. That's tiring. Because oh my God. It's, oh my God, it is tiring. Mm. It is so tiring. I wouldn't do well. <laughs> it is very tiring. 
I wouldn't do well because uh, I was reviewing one of the interviews recently and the guest asked me a question. So okay. she flipped it on me and she goes, Anas, how, what was the question? How are you ha- happy or how do you maintain your happiness? Mm-hmm. And I said, I thought about it and I'm like, by being myself, as much as I can be mm-hmm. true to Anas, the happier I am. And so that, then, that's a big thing and that's a great thing. Because before being ourselves and being authentic, we have to accept ourselves. And I think, I don't know, my own experience, that sometimes, whether it's from childhood or whatever experiences, you're not accepting of yourself or you're wishing to be someone else or be something different. So the moment that you can say, hey, I accept that I'm goofy and quirky and I don't like to dress up and I like to look, you know, bummed out. (laughs) Which you should have been. Which I should have been in my sweatpants and sneakers and no makeup. um, That I'm okay with that. And like F whatever everyone has to say or what they think. But that's hard. And it's hard in regular life. So imagine the pressures when you're in front of the camera all the time. Feel free to use the F word freely. The F word. I'm trying to be a lady. This, you you can, no, you have a balance. I do. Your your dress is the lady. My dress is helping. And you can say whatever you want to say. Okay. Okay, so I'll ask you a sensitive question. Sensitive? Yes. Okay. Um, from the brief that I know, and I don't like to over rely on research that you know, Nikki provides, but uh, it gives me a glimpse of somebody, but I take that as 20%. Right, definitely. I'd, I'd love to hear the opinion of the person. Okay. Um, and I know you started working early. You worked in your life early and you, you had a, you reminded me of Gary. Gary mm-hmm. said he had a childhood full of work. He used to work yeah. every weekend. And it was an interesting conversation because it was about regret. And he said, I missed out on childhood, but then it made me who I am. You know, it's that weird. Yes. If I didn't do this in my journey, I wouldn't be who I am today. Yes. But I kind of didn't have a childhood. So you started working early. Um, you didn't really maybe have a default childhood right? Uh, or typical. Do you think it was an advantage to start with whatever you went through? So when you only know, like at the time when you're young and, you know, getting into teenage years and young adulthood, for sure there's like this baggage and like resentment and like kind of like angst that you carry because you didn't have a... Uh, whatever a regular childhood or whatever TV childhood. Because I think for me, where I grew up, everyone was in a similar situation. So I think the childhoods that I've seen were on TV, like the perfect family and having everything, whatever. So I didn't grow up that way, like nowhere near that. But um, I think now at this point in my life, I am not grateful because it still freaking sucked <laughs> to grow up that way. And I wouldn't want any kid to grow up that way. But I'm like, OK, well, my childhood and all the things that happened made me who I am today. And I'm a successful woman today. And I'm proud of myself because I got here on my own and you know, kept my morals and values intact, which was very important for me. And I'm, you know, I'm doing you know, well. I'm ha- you know, basically mostly happy. <laughs> we have our ups Three and downs. words. Three words. I, I don't want details. Okay. And I know it's a, it's maybe a sore topic, but if you had to describe your childhood in three words, give me three words. Oh, that's tough. The ones, uh, that, the poo, ones that are three coming. words. I don't know three words. The ones that are coming are to your head. Destitute is that a word? Like destitute's like when you know everyone's pretty hopeless around you because they're all you know in unfortunately. Despair. Yeah, in despair, like financially, there's not enough money for anything or food. Like sometimes there's no food or like you'll see like, you know, you won't have money for school supplies or even like proper clothes. So I think destitute or despair is a good one thing. Um, Dang, I don't want to be all negative. No, if it's negative, it's negative. Abusive. Okay. Say that. And then a positive one. Let me get a positive. Let me find a positive one. So I would have to say, because as a kid, you don't know any better. So what word would, like, I didn't know any better. So that was life. So I couldn't compare it to anything. So it was fine. Innocent. Or naive. 
innocent, naive, innocent and naive, I guess, yeah. I think it's, it's really scary. Um, I have two kids from a previous marriage. and How old are they? Ten and five. And I, I always found it extremely fragile and sad, maybe is the right word, I'm mm. not sure, but it's really scary how helpless children are. And whatever environment you provide is what they will live. It's yeah. not like they modify or can no. change much at that age. Mm -hmm. They're helpless. They're reliant right. or dependent. So I really find it um, difficult when I see hardship on children. Yeah. Like if your life, you said, um, it had these tough moments, yeah. right? It's really tough just to even picture. You know, that You're you lucky. To... You're the lucky one then. It's nice when people don't understand where I come from, you know? Mm. And it's weird because I think when I, like I don't really talk about it because when people look at me, they can't even imagine where I came from. Yeah. Just because Recently, I guess the way I look also. You and know? the way you carry yourself. You think so? I yeah. mean, yeah. I, I mean, if you got to really know me, you can see some of that ghetto project life coming out, like yeah. the way I talk. Um, Sometimes there still is a little bit of that aggression inside, which I've learned to like, you know, not subdue, but to understand where it comes from and then to let go of it. Do you forgive yeah. your past? Yeah, I had to. These are the years, these recent years or this year that I'm really uh, understanding that I have to forgive, you know, my parents because that's, that's all they knew and they couldn't do any better. So yeah. that's been, I mean, I'm still working on it, but. How's your relationship okay. with mom and dad? My dad has passed away many years ago, but unfortunately he song, wasn't yeah. the best person. That's okay. Mm -hmm. My mom, because of her circumstances, unfortunately, you know, tried her best. But I think, unfortunately, she didn't have the tools or the ability to be someone who could really be there for us as kids and like i don't know how to explain it to be like a mom mom or what you think a mom should be yeah so that's tough but now being older and experiencing my own stuff i'm like holy hell she went through hell yeah i do not know how she survived everything she went through but now our relationship we're like friends yeah and now because you understand yeah and like I think even in a young age, because I had to work so young and I was doing my own thing and she was trying to, you know, she, she was working and stuff and having her issues. Um, I never felt like I had a mom. It was always like my friend, kind of. Mm. But not really the friend where I can tell everything to. It's really hard to explain because I don't know how anyone could understand where there's this person, she gave birth to me, but she's just there. Yeah. Like you can't I, go to I was them. picturing a roommate. Yeah. Thank you. That's what it was. It's like a roommate. And she provided the best that she could. But of course, when I was able to get a, a job, which at 12, I was like shoveling snow or doing whatever you can to make side money, collecting bottles. I don't know if they had this here yeah, yeah, yeah. where you can um, you, you make, I think, you make one, 25 one cents. cents. Yeah. yeah, it used to be more 25 cents a, a bottle. Yeah. So yeah. we would collect the bottles, whatever, return them. Um, yeah, so yeah, more like a roommate. That's a good, I never thought about it that way, but yeah, mm -hmm. something like that. But now we have a real, real friendship. And yeah. uh, it's nice. The, the interview with my mother, which is one of the strongest ones, I think, she talked about how with her mom, uh, also God rest her soul, mm -hmm. my grandmother, that um, she had a very tough relationship with her mother. I remember a bit of it when I was young, and it was very tough love. My grandmother never told my mother that she loved her in her life. That's like, in her life. Yeah. Never. But then my mother said something so interesting, which you kind of hinted at. She said she didn't know better. Yeah. And that she didn't know better. I can't blame her for not knowing better. If her mom treated her like this, she treated me. The same. The same. Yeah. And that was her. She showed through action, for example. Yes. I'll take care of you. I'll pay for your food. Yeah. That's love for me. But for you, maybe you're like, no, but on TV. Yeah. They're all not, hugging and yeah. loving. And you're like, well, nobody hugs me here. Yeah. Or like, yeah. yeah. So I find it very important what you said that 
my father didn't know better. Yeah. My mother didn't know better, but they tried or yeah. she tried. Yeah. But it was my responsibility and what I try to tell other people, we have choices in life. I have a sibling. I don't talk about her because unfortunately she's not well and she chose a different lifestyle. Okay. And then I chose my lifestyle. So you're total two? Two, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, if one day we ever talk again, which I don't know if we will, but I hope so, I wanted to get her on camera and for us to talk about our life growing up because it was the same life. But how did she choose this way and how did I choose that way? Very interesting. Yeah. She's given me some insight where I remember a couple years back we talked a little bit and she said, the best thing you ever did was to stay away from your friends. Hmm. Because my friends started doing drugs and drinking and all this stuff at like 12, 13 years old. Wow. You know, like getting into gangs and just doing dumb things. And me, I was labeled goody two shoes because I didn't want to do anything. Because somewhere deep down in my, I don't know where it came from, like some kind of moral compass, it was like, no, this is not right. I don't want to do it. It doesn't feel good. But then my sister started hanging out with them. And these were my age friends, and she's two years younger. So she started hanging out with them, and they started calling my house, not asking for me. They were asking for her. So now, in my younger years, there I was, like, sort of alienated and all alone. I didn't have anyone to hang out with then, unless I was going to put myself in those situations. Which, once in a while, I hung out, but I always knew to get away, you know, at certain timings or, like, slip away so mm. no one finds me. <laughs> But I think that's really hard as a young kid because you want to be accepted. Correct. Like it's kind of, I never felt like I accepted or I never felt like I got accepted or belonged anywhere. That was a big thing, which is hard and sucks. I find it very interesting how two individuals from the same circumstances and, and uh, environment can take extremely different paths or journeys in life. Night and day. Even me and my brothers were the same household, but very different. Yeah. And I sometimes wonder, it can be like... Phew. Yeah, totally. I'm, yeah. I'm sure it has to do with genetics, like nurture, nature, so environment and yeah. genetics. Yeah. But yeah, it's really... I do hope you reconnect because I don't know better, mm. so I'm not going to be philosophical, but I do think family uh, grudges, or not even a grudge, but not talking yeah. or communicating, can be a weight on somebody's shoulder. It, because it, they're, they're part of you. Definitely. And it is sad, but I think there's another thing I have to come to terms with is accepting that each person makes their life choices and I can't change them. Mm. That's another burden I carried for a long time where it's like, I want to fix people. I can relate. Yeah. So actually in my relationships, I, I think unconsciously I choose people that are broken because I want to fix them because yep. I'm also broken. But yet I want to do the fixing because I never wanted to look at myself as well. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, man, I've been discovering so many things. It's been a spiritual journey, if you want to Good. call it that. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, I have to learn to accept and let go. That's, and have I think compassion I, for the I've people. I've that... come to terms that um, I'll do my bit. Yeah. How they react. Do they take my advice? Do they not? Right. I gave my advice. I did my part. But my problem was I was doing too much. Mm. I was I was people pleasing, overextending, bending backwards to the point where then I have no more money because I spent it on that person to make them happy. Or now now financially I have nothing, so I have to go back to work and put myself in a situation where maybe it's not good for me because health or stress, because I've given all to the other people. Yeah. And then energy, emotional energy is a lot when you give too it's much. Draining. Emotional, yeah, super draining. How's yeah. your relationship with food? Because there was a lack of it, let's say, assu assumingly. That is funny that you ask that now. Right now I'm dealing with that, but a couple years back I had a bad relationship or a, not a bad relationship, but this weird relationship with money. Money was my next so, question. So, yeah. So, I'll tell you about money. Money, because I just had this conversation last night with my friend, who I'm staying with here. He's like, if you didn't grow up the way you did, you wouldn't have that drive to keep going and succeeding. And that thing in your mind where you were so traumatized by not having money and not having the basic necessities in life, 
has pushed you to tell yourself, because I've said this to him, because I used to say, I will never go back to that life. I will never be poor again. I will yeah. never, you know, not have. Like, I don't need to have luxurious things. People who know security. me know I'm very simple. But even though I have enough, I still won't stop working or trying to make Because you're afraid money. of because it's anything the fear. to do. Yeah. It's so much fear that I can't stop working. Like, it's like an obsession in a way. Yeah, I know what you mean. And sometimes it's not good. I had to learn in the last couple of years that because I have that obsession, I push myself so much that to the point where you're sick. Because, you know, stress, you get all these health issues like adrenal issues and your body starts breaking down, which I went through, whatever. Um, but I won't, look at my, I won't look at me. I'm like, no, I have to keep going. Gotta keep going, gotta keep going. Because God forbid, what if I lose this? What about that? What if I can't help my mother? What if I can't pay her rent? What if I can't pay my rent? What if I lose my house? Like all those things start going on in your head. So it's a, it's a good thing and a bad thing. Yeah, but how would you describe it? Is it a turbulent? Is it... Uh Stingy? Is it generous? Is it what? So is it? I'm so generous that that's another problem. So my therapist had said this to me. She's like, she's like, like, look at yourself. You work so hard to the point that you're hospitalized all the time. So you're spending your money on hospital bills and like clinics to get better because you're constantly sick. And then you're giving your money away to your family and your friends and whoever needs it but you never get anything for yourself. You don't buy anything for yourself. The only thing you're doing for yourself is paying your hospital bills. She's like, why are you working so hard when you don't even, you don't need anything, you have everything. Like, I'm a very low maintenance person. Anyone mm. who knows me. All the guys I are like I don't even want to say it because it's a little embarrassing. Like you never want to go shopping with me because I'm always like, do you really need that? Do you really want to spend that money? I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah. Like you can put that money towards something better. <laughs> Yeah. Like save it, you know, or donate it to someone. Don't, don't go shopping with her. Yeah, don't go shopping with me. I will tell you anything to make you not buy stuff. <laughs> Which is not good for me to say that because mm. I still want brands to pay me <laughs> to hire me. <laughs> yeah. But that was a big reality check. Like, why am I working so hard? Why can't I stop? Mm. I can't stop. <laughs> I'm a, I'm, I slowed down. I'm a workaholic. I yeah, think. are yeah. you? Yeah. But I enjoy what I do. It's kind of like a hobby. Yeah. So I don't feel it's work. And everybody's like, what's wrong with you? Why are you always working? That's but good. I enjoy it. That's good. So, so yeah. here's the thing. I enjoy what I do and sometimes I don't. Mm. And so I have the luxury of picking and choosing. But there was a point where I was just taking everything because yeah. I was scared. For the last two years, because I had a really bad illness, um, I had to take time off. And it was tough to slow down. But now with this whole transition or this new me, I'm learning and telling myself, no, it's a good thing. Like you should, you know, slow yes. down. You don't need that. You have enough for your bills. You have enough to eat and you have a roof over your head. Mm. So I want to now go into this new future of being happy and okay with a work-life balance. Even though I love my job, I still want a life. I didn't see my family and friends for years when I lived in India. Mm. I didn't see my mom for three years. Wow. How, how's your relationship with your family? Or what does family mean to you? I also discovered that family for me is the most important thing. Mm. But I don't have a family. It's broken. So I think in my fantasy, which most of my younger years I always pushed away because like, if you've never seen a family that functions in real life, you don't believe that you could have one yourself. Mm. So it kind of like screwed up my manifesting process <laughs> because I, I like want a family. I would love to get married and have my own family and create a happy family. But deep down inside, I don't believe it. So I have to work on that, on like visualizing and, and believing that, yes, there is a man. He's going to be amazing. He's going to be loving, he's going to be emotionally available, financially stable. It's okay. I hope he's handsome, but it's okay. He doesn't have to be. <laughs> he can be fat and bald. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, it's okay. Um, and also knowing what I want in a partner. That's important. So anyways, yeah, that is, that's a tough one, the money one and the family then, thing. And then food, you said. Food, I said, yeah. Food. 
I'm a foodie. I'm a foodie too. But in the last two years, I've been like filled with anxiety and a little bit depression and the not knowing what's my next like thing that I'm going to do in my life or, you know, just having a lot of troubles with even relationship stuff, which I won't talk about. My family stuff, there was a lot of stuff with my sister that happened as well. And, and then my own leaving India to come home to get better because I was unwell. And then having just being in a, in a space of not knowing created mm. this fear and anxiety and depression. And I started eating. A lot? I gained 50 pounds. I don't know what, what that is in kilos. Maybe like 25 kilos. What? Yes, boy. Yes. I mean, you ate looking, a lot. Yes. <laughs> okay. Because anytime I felt an emotion, I didn't know how to deal with it. So then I would go for a cake or a donut or something and I would eat it. And then like the sugar, sugar gives you that high. But yeah, then I'd feel temporary. shitty about myself. And then again. And then again in a cycle and a cycle. And then sometimes there was this moment or many moments of being in bed, being sad, watching Netflix, ordering burgers or whatever, and just eating till I want to vomit. Like, does, I don't know if anyone's ever experienced that. Yes, the food is so good, but it's not about the food being good. It's like you're trying to fill a hole. Interesting, yeah. It's such a weird, no, you know, no, like I've read, a I've void. Read. I should say, you're trying to fill this void and it's yeah. never getting filled, but you're eating and you're eating and you're eating. And hmm. It's not filling. How did you get out of that, that weird uh, zone? Uh, meditation. Really? Yeah. Like, it was really hard, and I feel, you know, I really feel for people who suffer from depression because experiencing it, woo, that is some shit right there. You've been depressed many times? This last two years was really tough. Like, really bad. Because but I think a, through my childhood, an, had I had little also. bouts of depression. Say again? You said you had an illness in the last Yeah, years. I was really unwell. Um, I don't want to talk about that, but... But you're unwell, do. so that plays huh. a big part. Yeah, it played a big part. And I have a lot, like, there was a lot of things going on. Like, when you're unwell physically and you feel it, and you're in a lot of pain, and then you have family pain and you have relationship pain. It's just like, like, oh my God, just so many things. And you don't know how to make anything better. So you kind mm. of feel... Hopeless. I can understand many mm. people out there. But I think uh, after two years, um, I, just, I just started watching videos to try to make me happy and try to get back into my meditation. I tried to push myself to go do some yoga or walking because like movement is really important. And then I would try to eat healthy, but I would always fall back. And I had to remember to not be so hard on myself. Mm. That was a thing. Meditation, like headspace or transcendental um, meditation? I'll put on like singing bowls, like just background music and sit there quietly and breathe. Yeah. Um, I also got into Buddhism. So I do the chanting, the Nam Myoho ho mm. chanting, which I find to be really like so helpful. Nice. I don't know if anybody knows about that, but really I've seen miracles happen when I started chanting. Like it's unreal. It helped. It helped. So, I mean, people might not be, be into it, but if they're not into the Buddhist chanting, definitely meditation is... I do. I do meditate. Yeah. I Great. really like the logic of um, being awake and taking a pause. Yes. It's like prayer. Yes. You know, in Islam, you have the five prayers, but I think a lot of people don't approach prayer, whether it's in church or in a masjid, yes. in a meditative manner, although I believe it should be. Yes. So for me, even just sitting down like this, for 10 minutes yeah, just, and just breathing mm. and no phone, no thoughts and try to neutralize thought yeah. and just think of your breathing. It's extremely healthy it's so because wonderful. literally you don't do it. You wake up, you get your phone, email, message out, phone call, you're out. This person drags you, you sign here till, you, till the nighttime. You literally don't sit alone. No. And even at nighttime, you're alone. too and tired. I, with the phone, I don't count as alone. Yeah, no, you're not I on mean, the phone. Alone. Is not, yeah, exactly. I mean, alone. Absolutely alone. Which is rare. It is rare. So that and sleep doesn't helped. count. Sleep doesn't. You count. need to be awake and, and still. Still. Which yeah. life doesn't allow you to do. So. Isn't that crazy? It's scary. It's scary. Yeah, and now, now they're teaching kids to meditate, which I think can be very. I think good. it's great. Yeah. I think it's great. I, I, I wish tried someone... to do it with my kids. <laughs> I think it was like a minute and a half. It's okay. I'm like, it's okay. Every minute, it's every fine. day, you could like yeah, increase yeah. it. 
I think if you put like, like I love this, uh, it's the Moses Code. Wayne Dyer has it on his thing. Or if you look at, if you Google him, yeah. Wayne Dyer, the Moses Code. It's like a 20 minute uh, sound uh, YouTube, just sound, a sound. So yeah. I think it's like, I don't know if it's singing bowls or flute or something, but the way that the composers have put it together, wow, when you just sit and you close your eyes and you listen to that, like you go into a whole nother world. Interesting. And after the 20 minutes, you just, you feel high. It's like better than drugs. <laughs> nice. Just all meditate before we go clubbing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there should be a club for meditators. Yeah, I'm sure there's something like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, it's really good. That mm. works well. Okay, yeah. what about? Well, we said that um, you know, Nargis. In the last two years, you had it. At, when it rains, it pours, oh, and it yeah. poured it at poured. you, right, from every yes. department. Um, do you think whether it's your childhood, or whether it's your relationship with money? or whether it's the image that you had drawn about a healthy family or mm. healthy love according to you know cartoons or movies TV, and yeah. how did all of that journey affect love relationships for you because have you been married before no i okay. wish i'm waiting okay God, where is the one? 2020 <laughs> No more jokes. Okay? It has to be funny. Oh, before we get onto that, I just want to say another thing that helped with the depression and mm. anxiety is to constantly wake up or at night or anytime during the day to thank God. And if you don't believe in God, thank the universe. Thank somebody. Thank you, God, for these shoes because these shoes are fly and I feel good when I wear them. Or thank God for the food that you're eating. Mm. That was one of my biggest things I've always done since a kid until two years ago when I got sick and, and I just spiraled oh. down into negativity. And I realized I was so negative because so many things were just coming at me that I was just going down in a deeper hole of negativity and I was attracting more negativity. Yeah. Once I started thanking God again, because I'm not religious. My father was Muslim, mom Catholic. I was Lutheran baptized, which makes no sense. I, we were poor, so they gave free food, so I went there. Yeah. Um, and now I practice Buddhism. So yeah. I'm just a spiritual person, but I do and have always thanked God for everything, and I speak to God. Yeah, People helped. think I'm crazy, but he answers me. There was... <laughs> I mean, not the voices, but like, you know, if you're open and conscious, you can see signs when you ask a question. Yeah. Okay, I don't know if people are going to think I'm weird. No, I'm, I'm spiritual also, yeah. too. I think a lot of people are religious, but not spiritual, which is sad. It's different. It's so important yeah. to be also very spiritual, to believe in a higher power or... Yeah. I think human beings need that. I, I th it makes you feel better. I think so. I don't so. know. Like, um, I know I feel better when I'm thanking, like, even, oh, I got a massage from this woman the a couple of days ago at the hotel I was staying at. And while I'm getting a massage, I'm just in my mind. I'm like, thank you, God. You have given her the most healing hands I have ever felt in my life. She is a blessing <laughs> to humans. May she, may she bless, bless the people hands. with her hands and <laughs> heal all the people. Like, literally, I get into, like, so emotional thankfulness, I start tearing. Because mm -hmm. I'm really genuinely coming from my heart. Like, I didn't tell her, though, because I feel a little weird, but yeah. I'm telling God. Yeah. I'm like, you have blessed her. She is amazing. <laughs> God always bless her, please. <laughs> and it's, it's so from the heart that I get like teary eyed. I don't know if you've ever done that, where you're so grateful and you feel so happy for something else. Like when I was younger, I would see birds and I get all teary eyed. They're so beautiful. <laughs> Look at those birds and those wings and the tree. I'm not even lying. I would cry when I would see a tree that was it pretty. It sounds like you really <laughs> live the moment, the present. That's why you appreciate those. Maybe, that, uh, maybe, maybe. And I find that very healthy because people who uh, live in the past or, or the yeah. future, it doesn't. Uh, but I lost that. That was one thing. In mm. these last couple of years with the issues and the, and the anxiety and stuff, I realized I was not in the moment. I wasn't giving thanks or noticing the, the flower or the tree. Yeah. I mean, it sounds so ridiculous when I'm saying it, but it's the truth. Like, to notice those things that are free, the beauty of nature or the kindness of someone, 
or just having a human interaction. Like when you came up to me after I left that Nike place, I was like, oh, that guy's really nice. Like he left such a nice vibe on me. You know, like you left an impression and I smiled about it because like, you were friendly. I don't know. I'm weird. No, I, that's a, one of my questions. So one, so I don't forget my... Um, yeah, sorry. I could totally get people off no, track. No, I, no I, do, I don't lose my track. Good, Leo. So one is, um, I don't know why I get a feeling, and I hope this is the end of it, okay. that you m used to go out with abusive men. Like, I don't mean physically only abusive. I mean, emotional abuse, it can be, yeah. it can be somebody mistreating you or not appreciating you or taking advantage or betraying. Definitely all of those. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. You are the winner. And that's why I say I hope it's the end of that. So not all of them. Some of them had their own issues. And like I said earlier, I would want to fix people because I felt like, guys, if it's, it's so easy, just, you know, don't do this and your whole life could change. But Unfortunately, humans need to sometimes experience stuff Correct. before they could change. Yes. And they have to want to make the change. Like one of my ex-boyfriends did a lot of drugs. Then when we got together, like we can't be together unless you stop the drugs. He stopped the drugs. For you. For me. Which is bad. Which is bad. Because then he, when we were apart, because I was a he mom goes all the back, time, yeah. went back. Cheated on me. I forgave him once. Once in my life, I forgave someone who cheated, and I tell myself I'll never do that again. Because once uh, you break something, this is something that played with my head. It's bad. Random question. Mm. I've been thinking about it this week. Would you give somebody a second chance? Uh, Let's say X cheated on you. Would you say one more chance? You do it again, you're out. I did back then. But do you think people, because we have this Arabic saying that, kind of like a dog doesn't lose. Yeah. Its, once a cheater, always cheater. Yeah, like or, that. Yeah, something like that. And do you believe that? Or I mean, I feel like humans One more could change, but I personally would not give another chance. Okay. Yeah. It's so tricky. That's why we need to, so this is another thing I learned, that we need to be clear with our boundaries. We need to define our boundaries, be clear with them. Mm. Um, I remember having this conversation with someone about how a lot of people start dating people and they think they're in a relationship, but then... No one has said, hey, I want to be committed to you. Yeah, you that's a huge issue. You need to verbally issue. say, we are now exclusive in a committed relationship and these are the rules of the yeah, relationship. So you have to be clear. Yeah. And I, I talked about this on Instagram and I talked about it with Gary. Gary actually said it and it, it, it complements my conversation on Instagram. Hmm. He said the one ingredient that makes all relationships healthy and sustainable is communication. Yeah. And I said on Instagram way back, I said... Any issue in any relationship, any, you, your boss, you and your director, you and your mother, you and your lover, hmm. the main thing is, mis, how did I say it? Misaligned expectations. Mm -hmm. So Assumption, we go out yeah. and I say, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, finish. Uh, I'm sure she's only talking to me. Yeah. In your mind, you're like, I'm still dating. Yeah, he didn't ask me. Yeah. So, and then I'm like, how dare you? Yeah. I've been committed. Yeah, but you've been committed. Good for you. That's your yeah. book and your regime. Yes. You never... I made that mistake. And you see, it's so Because important. I'm so loyal. Once I meet someone, yeah. I know it's going to be you. So I'm like, yeah, we're, we're married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We are married. What are you talking about? But I learned, yeah, you have to... <coughs> You have to communicate. communicate. I was not the best communicator, but I've learned that that is super important. So would you agree that your past relationships were talk not toxic? Maybe toxic is a Um, a, I don't, a not harsh all word. of them. A lot of them were really good people, really good people. They just had their yeah. own issues. So it wasn't toxic. Um, oh, you just maybe remembered one, yeah. I don't want to talk about that because no, no I need. don't want to, because Unfortunately, my past relationships were not on social media. No names. Yeah. We don't want names. But there's only one person, unfortunately, that was pushing me to post him on social media. And yeah. so I posted our whole relationship on social media, which was not what I wanted to do because I know what happens and how the media could be and stuff. And now that we're unfortunately having, I mean, we're, I don't even want to talk about it, you know, like. Talk about what you want to talk about. Uh, I just don't want to say the wrong thing because no matter what happened in the relationship or whoever's fault or whatever it was or for whatever reason, I just don't think certain things should be fully out there because some people, we should have some privacy, you know? Absolutely. To ourselves. So I wouldn't know. My relationships have been nice. Like I had great boyfriends. Like I left them. 
I left so that one, makes it a Leo, great? I had a Leo. Oh, he's wonderful. No, but that makes it great that you left all of them. Yeah, like, I, like I, but not because I wanted to, but because it wasn't working. Yeah. And like, like my Leo many, many years ago when I was in my younger years, uh, we could have gotten married. He's great. He's awesome. He's doing well. He's like multimillionaire, has businesses, good looking guy. Um, but I left because at that time in my life, I wanted to do more. I wanted to travel and he didn't want to travel. You're on different pages. Yeah. Timing. And I gave up an opportunity because that's what Nargis does. She gives up her opportunities to please other people, to make the relationship work or whatever, whether it's friendship, family or boyfriends. And after a year, I wasn't receiving what I needed from the relationship, but I was giving so much to him yeah. and I developed resentment. I, I know I what you mean. I was so angry. And then I just left. And then he was confused. Why did I just leave? There was a lack. Yeah. Of, and then I went uh, off to travel the world. And boy, did that change my life. Because if I didn't leave that relationship and stayed and got married. Could have kept you behind. Yeah. Absolutely. I wouldn't be sitting here with you. Yes. You know, and sometimes I always think about this. If. Let's make this a bit interesting. That makes life hard. But I, but like choices, we have a choice. I could have been happily married with a beautiful family with him. He's a provider. He's wonderful. He's kind. He's a hard worker. Has a nice family. He's hot. <laughs> but I had a beautiful family. But if I chose Nargis this. hadn't avoided those friends in that hood or neighborhood that you were in, mm. you wouldn't be sitting on this table literally. Act. Our chair, I mean. It's a domino effect from it's the It's so interesting. Like these little decisions and yeah. crossroads and... Every it all little thing. I find but life. not saying you can't change your life though. No, I believe like, you can. My sister had many opportunities to change her life. It's decisions. It just makes it difficult. Only few things yeah. I think in life are luck. If you are born uh, white or black, if you are... Uh, you don't choose your parents. Yeah. You inherit money. Yeah. Luck, I would say. Mm. I don't use luck too much because I think you create it more than you... Just and, randomly right. get it. The rest is all decisions. You decided. You decided. You could have pulled back. You could have gone for it. You could yeah. have tried. You could have not. You could have wanted to fit in and do drugs. Or you could say, forget it. I'm going my own way. I'll be alone. Do you think it's sad uh, that you're not talking to your sister? Oh, yeah. She's funny. She's awesome. You miss her then? Yeah. yeah. You think she'll watch this? Probably not. I don't think she even I has internet. She, does. she doesn't even have a phone. You'd be like, surprised how far this goes sometimes. Yeah, let's see. I don't know. I don't know if she's like going to be looking me up or something. Because mm. she's in a space where I don't think that's possible. Like, you know. Timing. Yeah. Let's when see. the right time hits. Let's see. Let's see. Um, another question that you brought to mind was what you said um, that when we met. Yeah. That you're like, I got a good vibe. Yeah. So, one, funnily, in my notes, yeah. if you read one of the questions, is, do you judge people on energy? I do. So now I'm asking you. Yeah. yeah. Um, because, so I kind of think that my intuition is maybe more than most people because of where I grew up. Because where I grew up, you were always, you know, looking over your shoulder. Okay, oh, there's a drug dealer on the corner. I'm going to cross the street. I don't want to walk down there. Or at night coming home. Okay always making sure of your surroundings and who's around you. So a lot of, you know, drug dealers, things happening, drug addicts, people who are not good, watch out for rapists, molesters, everything. So I think that unfortunate environment has actually helped me to increase the antennas of who to be friendly with and who not to. Although I am friendly a lot with a lot of people, but to know how far or like if they invited me over for a barbecue, do I go or do I say, oh, no, or do I just smile and walk away because it's weird? So I do use that um, sometimes. Well, actually, I have I've always been really lucky, except for one time, maybe not using my intuition. <laughs> I can't, I don't want to talk about this. You don't want to talk about a lot of things. I ended up in a relationship for two years. Yeah. That was... So, but in this relationship, you don't think you used your intuition? I knew what I knew. I had my gut feeling, but I ignored, but ignored it, it. For the first time in my life. Yeah. And I know why. 
because I was in a vulnerable space yeah. because of my health you issues, wanted because somebody. of everything. And I just needed someone to like spark my life back up or give me some hope. Yeah. But I felt it from initial. You saw the yeah. flags and you ignored it. Yeah. Say again. You saw the flags. I saw it from not even flags, just energy, feeling it. Mm. Yeah. Yesterday I had a friend uh, and we had the similar conversation how yeah. so many times, whether it's employees or friends or, you know, a girlfriend, boyfriend, it's, it's shouting at you. You see yeah. the flags, but you're but you naked, whether it. we are desperate for somebody at that stage, yeah. so we ignore, or let's say even in, jo- in a job, you really need somebody to help you, so you hire them. Although there's but, so many flags that yeah. they're bad for you. It's better to be alone, better to be alone. but you're like, well, get them. At the same time that I felt this weird energy, it was also a thrilling energy, like a vibration. It's very weird. I don't know if you believe in soulmates or karmic relationships. I don't know if I stuff. believe in soulmates. I don't think there's one person in the whole universe that's only right. for me. I think there are multiple. Multiple. I think uh, out of each 1,000 people, there's somebody who's extremely compatible. Yeah, but no, not even with compatible. What about just like feeling, like if you walked into a room and you met someone, it's like, whoa. Did you ever yeah. feel that? Yeah. Yeah. So that was the first time yeah. I felt that when I walked into uh-huh. the room. They didn't speak to me. They walked past me and I was like, whoa, <laughs> wow. And then I was like, oh, I don't like that person. And I was like, damn, <laughs> he's sexy. And he had these, these shredded pants on yeah. and I saw his knees and I was like, damn, he has sexy knees. What the heck? I've never seen such sexy knees in my <laughs> life. And I was like, ah, oh, no, I don't like this guy. Yeah. God, no, look at the way he holds himself. He thinks he's too good for everybody. But damn, he's fine. He's like, I like that. <laughs> no, 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 I don't like that. That was about, I swear to God, that was the whole conversation <laughs> in my head in a matter of like five seconds. <laughs> and I was like, whatever. And I just sat there quietly. <laughs> Fast forward two years. Fast forward to, yeah, like two and a half years later. But whatever. Anyways. It's good and bad. We're supposed to be together for lessons learned. Whether you stay together or, or move apart or come back together, God only knows. Yeah. I think that every relationship teaches us something True. about ourselves. And if I have to say that this relationship has taught me more in the last two years than in my whole entire life. Wow. Like I, like the... Like, I can't even explain how deep it hit me and what I had to dig through to really understand what is going on. And also knowing, I mean, if this person watches the video, he'd be like, yeah, whatever. Um, knowing that him and I mirrored each other. Yeah. Also, things I hated about him, I was doing also in my life. I remember talking to my mom one day. I'm like, oh, I did this, this. I can't believe I did this. I feel so, so like, like a shitty about you. person. Yeah. My mom said, oh, you always did that to us. I started crying. I was like, I'm so sorry. I never want to do that. I don't want to hurt you. I just mean it in a good way, but it comes out the way. You know, sometimes we don't know the things that yeah. we do to other people. Correct. And we think we're doing a good thing, or maybe we do it because we got triggered and the reaction was just so big, but not necessary, and you actually really hurt the person. Mm. These are things we have to work on. Like, we are not supposed to explode and react in such... You should respond, not react. Yeah, you have to... It's called emotional regulation. Mm. You need to breathe. <laughs> I, I don't yeah, like, I don't like to make decisions uh, when uh, yeah. either too happy or too, too sad. sad yeah. No, it's bad. It's bad, it's bad. Some people, unfortunately, you get triggered and it's like a, uh, an explosion. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a terrorist attack. <laughs> True. Yeah, because they're the just buffer. like defensive, you know? Someone yeah. will say something or do something where, I mean, I don't know how many people are normal out there, but usually you would say, hey, I need to talk to you about this. What you did today really hurt my feelings and I didn't like it and I felt this way. Mm. But instead, maybe you're like, oh, fuck him. I'm going to do this. You watch. I'm going to get you. Because you can't be doing that to me. And you're having the conversation in your There's head. ego. Yeah, it's ego. That's all ego. Didn't you say that earlier about that book? The ego is the enemy. Ego is the enemy. It's a ve- like, and you'll notice a lot of um, wealthy people, rich people, celebrities, uh, short guys uh, are extremely insecure. They have the, what they call it, Napoleon complex. complex yeah. Which they shouldn't. I, I mean, I everybody understand. in the bed is the same height. I don't know. <laughs> I understand where they're coming from. Yeah. You know, and it's co- overcompensating. It's yeah. like um, 
when you talk to a, it's a very Arab thing. I don't know how it is in Asia or America. Yeah. yeah. But the girl was like, oh my, he's so cute. He's so jealous. He asks me um, where I am with who and what I should wear. I'm like, Control. that's not jealousy. That's insecurity. Don't yes. mix. Jealousy is a natural emotion. Yeah. Uh, I like you and I see you laughing with somebody. Naturally, I'm like, I wish I was that somebody. It's yeah, normal jealousy. Yeah, yeah. Insecurity is like, why are you wearing this? Who are you with? Send me a picture. Controlling. This is mental but, manipulation yeah, and yeah. meet. And by the way, the people who are like that, it's never enough. It's never enough. But today you come back and yeah. you have a curfew at 10. Yeah. Tomorrow you find something it's else. It's going to be 8 o'clock. I don't like yeah. red. Yeah, it's don't red. ever wear red. And, and then that red becomes abusive. And, you can relate, huh? <coughs> I'm just going to be quiet, but I could totally relate to that. It's yeah. never enough. And for a people pleaser like me, who wants to make sure that everybody is happy. You're losing yourself. Your soul is getting sucked out until you're just like a, pr- a raisin, not even a prune. A prune is bigger than a yeah. raisin. It'll be a raisin. I agree. It's sad. That's, that's uh, emotional abuse and mental abuse. There's a lot and of that. That is the scariest one because yeah. it's worse than getting hit. It's su- subtle. Um, can I ask a random question? You don't have to answer this. I don't know why it just came to my mind, but I think it's an important topic. Yeah. Uh, being independent mm. as a child, meaning you don't have the typical protection yeah. of parents, right? Uh, and being in a tough neighborhood. Do you get a lot of issues with molestation or prone to being raped or abused? or bullied yeah like a lot of these and these are really scary for children out there everywhere very even with parents who are like it's okay my kid is fine no it's not fine no yeah and do you face or did you personally face a lot of that so i i think i was very lucky because i didn't have to experience uh a lot of the things that you mentioned but i do know people who have and it's very traumatic it is and it then changes your life and the choices you make because you're so scarred yeah i've seen it a lot and again it scares me because these kids are helpless Helpless. you know you try to beat an adult it's very different than you try to beat a child who can't hit you back and the worst part is that with the whole like say raping or molesting it's usually someone close kid trusted this is the scary neighbor i was telling a friend today i'm like don't even leave your kids at their uncles don't I know stories about people. It's like usually that. the relatives. Yeah. Okay. Sad. We narrow it down. I know. Narrow it down. We can talk forever. It's going to be a five-hour show. <laughs> what are you afraid of? Uh, um, oh, God. Be, to be honest. Let me be honest to myself also. I am afraid of not finding my life partner and having a family. Okay. Which is not good because you're not supposed to f- be afraid because you want to be positive about yeah, it. That shouldn't be the driver. <laughs> That's, yeah, but at, I'm working on that. But I'm really like nervous. I'm like, who am I gonna, like I wanna, I'm a partner person. I wanna spend the rest of my life with someone. Yeah. You know, I wanna like, you know, help them down the street and their cane, wipe their butt if they can't wipe <laughs> yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like comb their hair, cut their nose hairs. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully they would help me with stuff as yeah. we get old. Yeah, I want to grow old with someone and have a family. But I'm a little afraid that it's looking kind of, it's looking kind of dark out there. <laughs> Especially with the people, the way people are behaving. We spoke earlier about Most how, people are shitty. Like, <laughs> yeah, they're fair. like, like things are changing, I guess, with social media and people having the bigger, better deal. BBD, yeah, they're looking for the bigger, better deal. Instant, so. ah, you talked about in your interview, you spoke about instant gratification. Yeah. Well, we literally spoke about that, me and Gary. And I told them, it's really scary because I'm pre-internet, post-internet. I saw both. Me and you. Yeah, so uh, the current generation, internet. Yeah. Uh, I'm hungry, mm. app. Yeah. I want to date, app. Mm. I want to book a ticket, app. Everything is so quick. I get it quick. If I don't get it, I switch to the next app. Mm -hmm. So nobody's patient. Nobody wants to work hard. Relationships is like an investment for long term. You can't put your money on a stock and say, no, tomorrow you're going to give me $10 million from this stock. Sometimes Mm -hmm. it goes up and down, up and down. 
and you know you have to. You have that's to put what the you call a one night stand, it. not a proper relationship. Yeah, but one night stands. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't know, but from what I heard, they're not fulfilling in of reality. Of course not. Basically, exchanging two souls and energy, someone you don't even know. Plus, what kind of disease you might get? Like, oh, I don't even want to know. Yeah. Like, I don't want to know. But where is the thought process of? For example, I'll say my experience. I always feel like my ex- I don't like to talk about too much of myself and my experiences because I give too much away. But if you're in a relationship, and I know the whole fact of thinking that you're in a relationship without establishing it is one thing, because I'm very loyal and committed, which is so annoying. I hate it. Um, once you are in a relationship and you made the commitment, if you have bumps and ups and downs, you don't break up or say, oh, I'm not happy and disappear and then go f- sleep with some other women or your exes. Yeah. You can't do that. That's not fair. If we were married, which I think every relationship is a preparation for the signing of the contract and moving in and having a family, you need to conduct yourself in a matter in a manner that you are going to be the loyal, honest and committed person. You're unhappy. You have an explosion. Yeah. Take your space a couple of days, but don't Mm. go sleep with someone to make yourself feel better. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is that? Like, have the patience to think through your emotions and wait. It's tricky, Nargis. And then talk a lot to of, A lot partner. of people don't have that mindset nowadays. Very it's few. Logical. Logical. If yeah, you sleep I'm, with someone else, what is you, that you're saying? giving your love away. And common, you, common sense is not so common. Oh, well, that's a shame. Damn, I need yeah. to go to another planet because this planet is freaking me out. <laughs> Where's Mars at? <laughs> <laughs> or whatever, I don't know. Going to um, Venus, the planet of love. <laughs> what did I want to ask you? <laughs> Best moment in your life. I have been so blessed. I've had a lot of really amazing moments. But the best moment in my life is hard. One of. There's so many. Um, I think, I don't know. What's like a best moment though? Like what, what made comes me so to happy? Mind? Or Something so you remember fondly. So a lot of my best moments are attached with the worst moments. <laughs> Okay. Does that make sense? Sure. Like, I broke up with an ex many, many years ago because he cheated on me. So I decided to take my time and I said, I'm going somewhere on my own to just heal my heart. So I picked a place. I picked New Zealand. I love New Zealand. Queenstown. <gasps> Queenstown is the most beautiful place ever. I lived in ever. Auckland, but Queenstown, yeah. It's the most beautiful place it's ever. A, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful country, the whole place. Yeah. So I went for my, by myself for three months. Nice. And that was like part depressing, but part uh, exciting and invigorating mm. and, you know, Worst joyful. moment. Oh, that's bad. I don't want to say it on camera because it has to do with my sister. This so, is the worst one? Yeah, something with her. Mm. But let me think of another one because there's so many bad moments. <laughs> Well, it makes you you. There's so many. Worst moment is when my two friends, who were like sisters, they died in a car accident. It's very sad. Yeah, at the same time. And I was supposed to go with them. <sighs> and I got into a fight with my mom. because like, I want to go with them. They're going to play pool. She's like, no, get upstairs. And, and I called her a B word. And we got into a huge fight. And then that night, we got a phone call. That they died in a car accident. That's very difficult. Yeah, yeah. That was Trump. I was like. And imagine you could yeah. have been. I could have been. Yeah. This is where sometimes I don't understand life. Weird, like right? that I decision by your mother saved your life. Yeah. Can you imagine? Literally. Or we wouldn't yeah. have this. But we got into a fight. So I was hating her. I was like, get all angry. And like, I hate you. I hate you. I mm. do not hate her today because I'm sitting here with you alive. And, and the yeah. other people. Three people died in the car, and one person was badly burnt, their like whole body and stuff. And yeah. Any regrets? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, sometimes I wonder if I got married to that ex Leo, how life would be. Would it be like easier or calmer and nice? So I wonder, but I don't regret it. Yeah. I just think about how life will be different because I do understand that no matter what life you choose, we're all going to have problems. It's all going to get boring. Like my life looks glamorous. Yo, it's boring because I'm doing the same thing over and over again. It's like eating spaghetti every day. 
but I have to be grateful. Just like in a relationship or marriage, we're going to be with the same person for so many years. We have to look every day at the person and say, oh, I'm so grateful. Think of the good things. Mm. Notice something interesting about them that maybe you didn't notice. So no matter what, whether I'm living the happy married life with kids and a nice home and whatever, or I'm a film star, or whatever, traveling the world, making movies. So I don't regret. I just think. I don't think too much because it might put me in like a crazy uh, moment. But I'm like, oh, I wonder how it would be. Mm. But I don't regret. Mm. No. Maybe I regret wasting my time going to college. That was a waste of my time. Chemical engineer. I I did fine arts and psychology. And here we're talking. But I think it's also part of my... My brain Journey. is the way I think now. Yeah. It played a part, I guess. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, so maybe there's no regrets. Yeah. Every, there can't be regrets if we could find the silver lining in everything. Regrets is living in the past. Yeah. It's very dangerous. But also, like, say my last two years, that was so crazy and, like, I, I didn't work that much and I was in this bad space and I gained so much weight and all this stuff happened to me. Which I want to see a picture of that 50 pound. Uh, I'll show you. <laughs> where, where my managers and friends were like, oh my God, what are you doing with your life? What are you doing? You're gaining weight. Like, were you throwing your life away? Like, you know, reminding me that, that what I'm doing or my choices were not the right choices. Mm. I can sit here today and be like, damn, that was a waste of my life. Why did I do that? I regret whatever meeting, whatever, blah, 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 I regret that, but I don't because I'm going to look at it in a different perspective Yeah. so I don't get depressed about it. I'm going to look at it that I learned so much about myself. I have so many more tools in my toolbox to forge out there for the next chapter of my life. Mm. And that's positive. I have an interesting one. Since money is important because it brings you security and you, you had... You had it missing in an earlier yeah. life and now you have it. So what if money is guaranteed? It's guaranteed. This is a, th- a theoretical scenario. You have money for the next thousand years. Guaranteed with one Maybe. condition. What? You have to choose a job. Choose a job? Yeah. Dude, if I could be like some travel channel hostess. <laughs> okay. Traveling around the world, that backpacking, be hiking. Doing like luxurious stuff and camping and all the other stuff. So that's your yeah. passion. Or I or I would no. I think traveling. Yeah, I was gonna say like I want. I always wanted like a like a healing holistic retreat where we grow our own food and like people could come and stay and we mm. do yoga and all that fun stuff. Mm. So those two things. Last one. Or a doctor. I'd be a doctor. She, so ha- she wants to do a lot of so things. But, but actually, everything has to do with like nature and maybe helping. I want to be a scuba diver. Yeah, no, no, I wouldn't want to be a scuba diver. <laughs> you do? No. No. What would you be? What would you do? Just same thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah maybe maybe, maybe footballer also. Yeah. I always wanted to be play football. I think also like if I had to, I, I wouldn't want to pick one job. The, the job that I do now, like when I was modeling and now acting and stuff, I love it because I get to do and experience different things. Mm. And even in my characters, I get to be different people, yeah. you know, and I get to dress up different, fun, yeah. you know. And I'm not that girl that you see on screen. I'm a girl yeah. that dresses in sneakers and jeans and I don't wear makeup or I, sometimes I don't even brush my hair. Um, but I get to be someone else. So yeah. I think that's exciting. Last one. Yeah. Dang, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Jet lag. Nargis in one word. Nargis in one word? That's hard. One word? I don't know, bro. I never thought about myself really that much, which is what I'm trying to do now. Good. Which word comes um, to mind? Um, resilient. It's mm, a good one. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I'm still here. Thank you. Did you shake my hand? Oh, you touched me. I did.